Hey everybody, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Hi you guys, happy Friday. Happy Friday everybody, day 32 of the Quarantine Gardeners, and that's us. Today we want to talk to you about our Crocosmia plants because we love them and we want to show them off a little bit. Yeah, so we're out here at the front of our house and we're going to give you a little tour of our Crocosmia and what to expect when you grow them. Also, we want to show you we harvested a few seeds out of our Crocosmia a few years ago and we're finally trying to grow them from seed this year and we'd like to show you what they look like. So without further ado, here we go. So everybody, we're out here in the front of our yard and this is Crocosmia right here. Isn't this foliage just beautiful? Now, it's so striking. Yeah, it really is. And if you look at it here, everybody, it kind of looks like little swords coming up out of the ground. It's really similar in that way, like iris leaves. Which is, yeah, it's in the iris family. So just to let you guys know, Crocosmia is actually a corm bulb, one of the five types of bulbs out there. And so that helps you understand how to handle it, plant it, and care for it through each season. We have a book available on Amazon, uh, electronic or paperback, how to plant your garden bulbs. So just a little plug there. Our Crocosmia is Crocosmia lucifer, and it's bright red. The flowers come shooting up out of the base, and they just get really tall and bright red. Yep, they get about three or so feet tall, all bunched together, and they're just gorgeous. They're gorgeous, and they're very, very attractive to pollinators, especially hummingbirds. So we love having that in the front yard. And something to think about, too, is that when you have these Crocosmia, they're going to get tall enough, they might actually start flopping over. So you're probably more than likely going to have to uh, string them up or stake them somehow so they don't fall over. One thing that's pretty cool about Crocosmia that we love anyway is they're very low maintenance. Other than like what Sean said about staking them, they're drought tolerant so you don't really have to water them that much, but they do have some pest problems. We had a condition where all the leaves started turning brown and we looked it up because we weren't sure what it was and it turned out it was spider mites. And it was a pretty bad infestation, but we were able to spray it with the horticultural oil and they went away. And right now these look gorgeous. And they've really spread too, which mm -hmm. is cool. They started just spreading underneath the ground and yeah, they're doing really well. Here's another area in our front yard where we decided to grow some Crocosmia and this is a great spot. It gets a lot of sun. So this is, um, we noticed that it's getting some brown tips here. This foliage, maybe it might be a water deficiency or. Yeah, it's been a really dry spring here, everybody. So chances are that's just from a lack of water a couple days, uh, for a couple days. And it's okay, yeah. It's it happens. But overall, the plant looks very healthy and we're just happy to see that. We have several other locations around our yard where we've been spreading Crocosmia, so we'll continue to do that because mm -hmm. we, we love it. It's just such a beautiful, striking flower. Mm -hmm. And it always blooms just before or just after the first day of summer, usually around here. And kind of a fun design tip, Crocosmia looks really good with Shasta daisies. Mm -hmm. You kind of have that bright red and white pop. That's what we've done in a lot of spots around our yard as we kind of incorporated those two plants together. Yeah. the. The contrast in textures of leaves is amazing too, is. and height difference in the plants. So lastly, we wanted to show you what we harvested a couple years ago, which was really fun. We were able to harvest these at the end of the summer. The seeds were right there in the seed pods, and we were able to collect these and save them. And these are a couple years old, but um, we planted some this year, and we're hoping to see some seeds germinate. So we'll see what happens. So you guys, that's it for Crocosmia. That's our plant chat for you guys today. And we love Crocosmia, as we've stated many times. It's also a really popular plant profile on our blog. So that's that shows us that a lot of people are still interested in learning about Crocosmia. Yep. It's a really beautiful plant, and it'll add a lot of vibrancy and color to your yard. So if you have any questions or comments for us, make sure to put them down below this video. And also, give us that thumbs up and let us know if we're doing a good job or not. And definitely subscribe to our channel so you get updates on our latest videos. Down below, we'll link some flower stakes for you, the same kind we use. So um, ch check those out if you need those. And also, if you're looking for Crocosmia plants to plant in your own garden, we'll have links below down there too for Eden Brothers. Mm -hmm. So for now, you guys, have a great day. Have a great Friday. Get outside, get your hands in the dirt, and have some fun. Yep, stay healthy, stay safe. See you later. See you tomorrow, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.